Hey everyone and welcome to the Bora Minda podcast. I'm your host Zuleika and it's been quite a while since I recorded anything for the podcast. I actually tried to do that last night. So right now it's a Sunday night for me. Wait, uh, it's Sunday morning because it's like 1 a.m. right now. Um, and I tried to record something yesterday but it didn't, you know, it didn't really felt like it was up to par or if it, it, it didn't feel um it didn't feel like it made <laughs> it didn't feel like it made a lot of sense um but i haven't been able to um prepare much for um you know the any upcoming episodes for the podcast uh, i've not been feeling super well and i've been super busy and uh i had my exams and that that didn't particularly go super well um also have a lot of things going on we as an organization are also working on quite a few projects that are pretty exciting and trying to connect with you know volunteers and people who might want to collaborate with us so that's been going on behind the scenes you know other than this podcast and this podcast is like you know one of the things that uh we tried to do um and it's been a little tough to um keep up with everything but so i'm trying to do this episode like i said i haven't been writing scripts per se for like um proper episodes but what i do want to do and i've been meaning to do some of these more personal episodes i guess um i really want this podcast to be somewhere where um we can share experiences of people with lived experience of mental illness and mental health issues we've talked about things that we can do to help with our own mental health and that isn't necessarily just for people who struggle with mental illness um and we also talked about OCD quite a bit but all of that has been pretty formal and for this time I'm skipping all of all of formality and this podcast isn't really intended to be like super formal sometimes it'll be rather formal sometimes it'll be like really really chill where if i get to like you know talk to you or talk to the people in a super casual way and that's what we've been that's what we've been trying to do all this while and today i don't really have a lot to say i i've been um writing a lot not in terms of like formal scripts but like you know what i have been thinking about and what I've been going through. And today I tweeted about what it means for me to be stable um in terms of my mental health. And I've mentioned before um that I do struggle with mental illness and I felt like I wanted to share with people some of my experiences in more detail. You can follow me on Twitter. It's at Zulaika M. So that would be at Z U L A I K H A M. And I I'm just going to read I'm just going to read out the tweets that I sent out. I know that um some people would have read this, but I thought, you know, I'd read it out loud because maybe it will feel more meaningful maybe it will reach more people as well so i'd like to share with y'all what being stable means to me for now i consider myself quite stable in terms of my mental health if you didn't know already i have been struggling with clinical depression and anxiety for over 4 years now being mentally healthy and happy is one thing but being stable is another What being stable looks like for me is not having suicidal ideation as often, being able to talk and connect with people, being able to find meaning in what I do and being able to bounce back. Being stable doesn't mean I'm free from depression and anxiety. The symptoms have not disappeared with medication and treatment, 
but they have been reduced. This is what it means to live with mental illness. It is something you constantly have to think about and keep in check. Being stable means I am satisfactorily functional. I still have breakdowns. Sometimes they are actually really, really bad. Like for the past few days, my depression has been pretty bad and there are some suicidal ideation and a lot can go on. I couldn't sleep last night and spent time in bed until the afternoon. I promised to see my friend today for a hangout, but I had to cancel. I've cancelled on her many times actually over the years, but only when I feel really awful. Today was one of those days, and I'm super thankful that you know I have friends that are understanding of what I go through on a regular basis. I had a really heavy feeling in my chest, and the thought of putting on the effort to get ready and go out made me feel dizzy and wanted to vomit. I don't think I've ever explained how it affects me physically. I simply say I'm feeling depressed, but some people don't get that. Some people think, go out, you'll feel better. And honestly, you don't know that. And I'm not here to risk having a mental breakdown in public. It makes my anxiety way, way worse. People who have experienced this know what I'm talking about. So instead of risking many things, not only breakdowns, but also my ability to concentrate on driving to go out whilst feeling spaced out, I chose to stay at home and try to give myself the space to do what I need to do to feel better. Being stable means I'm able to recognize the best decision for me at any given moment when it comes to my mental health. Being stable means I know what's right for me and I'll listen to what I know about myself and not feel too guilty when I ask for space to heal. Being stable means that I don't have super long episodes of depression, that I'm not super afraid of going out because of social anxiety, that if I had a problem, sure, I could possibly even get suicidal, but I can bounce back as well. Stability means I'm surviving, sometimes thriving. So that is what being stable means to me. I have been under treatment, medication, and psychotherapy for the duration of the four years. I've had to adapt and be flexible due to changing doctors and locations, but I could generally say I've been in treatment all this while. You know, some people have to live with constantly checking in with their mental health condition. It's an ongoing process and there's not really a simple fix. Like our physical health, our mental health goes up and down. And some people have more of these than others. I just want to say that I'm proud of myself for how far I've come. I'm proud of the people around me who have sought treatment and are trying to keep going. I'm even proud of the people who are considering taking action for their mental health needs. Being stable isn't perfect, but it can change so much for a person. And how we know it will be okay even when we're living with mental illness. Thanks. That's all I have to say for this episode. Um, If you want to share what being stable means to you or what recovery means to you just give us a shout out on our social media um you know through comments replies and dms that's fine and i hope you all take care of yourselves and also hope that we can talk more and more openly about our issues and feel safe doing that and not feel like we're alone i've seen a lot of great things happen on social media and i know that it can be a toxic place but i hope you know that there's a community out there you know like the people involved in minda and also the community that participates within what we do so i i hope you find some sort of solace in knowing that there's something out there and that i know many people are trying their best to make mental health better in malaysia 
And I've met a lot of great people with great ideas and like great intentions and a great heart in terms of wanting to advocate for mental health awareness. Please continue supporting us. For now, we um, are self-funded and we're trying to raise funds through different means. So right now, we're trying to do merchandise and we deliver talks and workshops as well, usually to universities. And we're trying to set up other things as well in the future um, in order to sustain ourselves, hopefully. And we're applying for you know funding and grants as well so um hopefully we'll be able to not only keep going but be able to be sustainable and do greater things because we have so many things that we want to do and we hope that you get to see that and be a part of it but in the meantime um thanks for supporting us and Remember to follow us on all our social media accounts. So we have Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And our handle is Mindakami. That's M-I-N-D-A-K-A-M-I. We also have our website out, which is Mindakami.org. And if you want to follow the podcast, we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Thank you so much for listening and I'll talk to you as soon as I can. Bye-bye.